Hello, I'm Matt and welcome to Badger Workshop. The awesome makers have issued another challenge and this time is to make something with a scaffold board. I've got a 2.4 meter one here. I like to try and use reclaimed materials, but unfortunately time was a little short and I just picked this up at my local store. So my plan is to make a tool tote and I'm using this tool bag as a basic reference for dimensions. I say I'm using it as basic dimensions because I'm making it a little bigger. I want it long enough to be able to fit my Japanese pull saw. So with the tote being a little longer, I'm also going to make it a little taller. Which should give me enough clearance to get a full size 18 volt drill in beneath the handle. Here I get to use my new stop block system on the new Mitosaur stand. I tend to set up a stop block whenever I need more than one piece, just so I make sure they get them exactly the same. So that's the base done and the two ends, now I need the sides. If I can, I find instead of using a tape measure, it's better to hold the piece of work up and mark where it needs to be cut. I cut it to length on the miter saw and then I can rip it down on the table saw. I'm going to use the bigger piece for the sides and that little scrap piece I'm going to use later as an internal divider. I need to get two sides out of that one piece, so it needs ripping down on the table saw. So I add this extra support to the fence which helps me rip down taller pieces. I start with quite a shallow cut and then keep flipping the piece over and raising the blade. My saw just has the capacity to cut through this. As you can see, it's not the perfect lined up cut but I will run all the pieces through the thickness of later to give them a clean up. You can then do the same thing with the off cut, just splitting it down the centre. This I managed to do in just one pass, and I used the patented Jimmy Duresta rip and flip technique. Now I put all the bits through the thicknesser. This has got some newly sharpened blades in, so it leaves a nice finish, and we'll clean up all those bits that I sawed down but also will reduce the sanding on the other bits as scaffold boards haven't got the nicest finish to start with. I want the ends of the tote to have a taper to them, so I mark out how tall the sides are, and then I can mark out how much material I want left at the top and then taper the sides or draw a line where I want the taper to be. I do have a tapering jig for the table saw, which leaves a nicer finish and is more precise, but when you've only got to make four cuts, it's just quicker to use the bandsaw. The tote's going to need a handle, so I drill a hole in the top of both of the ends. This is one of these times where I've actually thought the project through. It's easy to forget about these things and then put it together and have to do these holes. They could be done with a hand drill, but a drill press is going to get them in much straighter. Time to get this put together. I'm just going to put it together with some wood glue for now, and I'm going to come back and reinforce things later. It was so nice to get to a bit of the project that wasn't making any noise, so I could have the door of the workshop open and you can see the sun streaming in. So with the bottom ends and sides all glued in place, I can get some clamps on and I'll leave it for a few hours to dry. When the glue is dried, the clamps can come off and it's time to reinforce these joints. The plan is to drill through using my dowel jointer. I go around both sides, drilling through the sides into the ends and through the sides into the base. Off eBay, I picked up some oak dowels. I think these are going to contrast really nicely with the pine of the scaffold board and make a bit of a feature out of the dowels. I've cut them down slightly too long on the bandsaw because I can trim or sand them flush later. And then I fill the holes with a bit of wood glue and then they can get bashed into place.
While I wait for the glue on the dowels to dry, I can start work using up all the little scraps making some internal dividers for the tote. I want to have one divider going down the centre, and then two little dividers one side. So one side has kind of got a full length so I can get a saw in, and then some little dividers the other side to get small pieces in. So you can see I've laid out a screwdriver and a pair of pliers to roughly position the dividers, and then I can glue and use the brad nailer to hold them in place. I then get some glue on the bottom of this and then get slid into the tote which has got quite a nice friction fit anyway but then I get some weights on and leave it to dry. When all the glue is dried I can start sanding it with a very aggressive 40 grit just to knock down the tops of those dowels and then I move my way up the grits until I get a quite nice smooth finish. This is a new toy I got a little while ago and I've not really used it yet so I thought this was the perfect project for it. Maybe I'll start turning into Jimmy Dresta now and brand everything I own. I had a tin of hard wax oil, so I used this as the finish. It's incredibly hard wearing, as it can be used on floors. So it should hold up quite well to being bashed around and tools thrown in and out of it. As I remember to drill the holes earlier, it's time to get that handle in place. When I've made little beer totes that are very similar to this before, I've used some 15mm copper pipe as the handle. I really like the look of it, so for this I'm going to use some 22mm copper pipe. The trouble is, when this is fully laden with tools, I'm not sure it'd be strong enough. So, I've found some wooden dowel that fits perfectly inside it. And I've cut it down to the same length as the copper pipe, and it just fits. To hold the handle in place, I just mix up some epoxy and put it around the ends and then some copper end caps can go in place. I've managed to use up most bits from this scaffold board but I had these end protectors left so I thought I'd at least use one of them. I can cut it down, put some holes in the end, fold those ends over and then after straightening a couple of the nails out I can nail it onto the end of the tote. and I have a handy little place to keep a tape measure. Thank you very much the awesome makers for coming up with this challenge. Thanks for watching and please subscribe for more videos.